May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 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 A few years ago, um, it's actually quite a lot of years ago now, uh, when I was the chaplain at St. Luke's, I was lucky enough to go on pilgrimage to, uh, to Vanuatu. Now the thing about a pilgrimage is that the idea is not to go there as a tourist, where what you do is you uh, take pictures and you sort of see things, but it's, it's all about consumption in a sense. You consume the views, you consume the culture, but to go and to interact and to learn. And whilst we were there, uh, we, we stayed in a little village called uh, Nawalela, uh, and then you know, just outside of Nawalela, sort of a, well, for those of us who were kind of Westerners and unfit, it was quite a hike. For everyone else, it was just over there. <laughs> Uh, but we went. We, we, we had a day, a little bit of time, with some members of the Melanesian Brotherhood. And one of the things that was very striking about their little spot was they had, you know, you know when you go into a house and it's got like a little thing for umbrellas, it's got a bucket or something for umbrellas. Well, they had a bucket for these walking sticks. Now these were young. Melanesian brothers, they were probably in their mid-twenties, they don't need a walking stick to get around. Those guys are amazing. They go, I'm going to that village over there, they walk in a straight line, straight through the forest, and it's, you, you can take a car the long way around, and they'll get there first. They don't need a walking stick. But they take a walking stick. Because they understand that this is the instruction that Christ gave. Take a staff, but nothing else. Now the staff, um, for them, is symbolic, and they're, 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 they are these beautifully carved pieces of wood. And I understand that they either they do it themselves or they're gifts from family when they join the brotherhood, uh, depending on the person. But it's all about doing their, responding to their call, their ministry call. And that was an, an incredible opportunity to go and talk with them for a while. But the thing is, although that's a very special call, there's nothing particularly unique about being called. It's an important thing for us to remember. Uh, one of the things that happens to clergy as they're kind of going through the training process is they get moved around a fair bit. So um, I started at St. James on the Gold Coast, and then I went to Narang, uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. Then I was in um, uh, Chermside, no I wasn't, I was in Carindale. Um, I worked in one and worshipped in the other. Anyway, uh, <laughs> things blur. <laughs> but they move us around, not because we can't learn where we are, but because part of it is about learning to to speak to people who don't necessarily know us very well, and who, but who need to learn to hear what we have to say. Because we've all got something to say. And uh, it's easier to move one person than to retrain everybody, to listen to the wisdom that comes from those people that they remember watching growing up. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest, the people at St. James probably remember me with an earring and a ponytail. Uh, so there's, there's quite a lot that they would have to forget. Uh, <laughs> oh, I was trying to be rebellious, but I wasn't very good at it. Um, <laughs> which is an interesting thing, because uh, I don't think Jesus was trying to be rebellious. Uh, I don't think he went through that phase. Um, but Jesus comes to his own hometown, and he's talking to them, and he's preaching. And the first thing they say is, wow, this is amazing. Where did this man get these things? What's this wisdom that's been given to him? What's this, where did he get the, And then very quickly, the question is, but, but isn't he a carpenter? And the answer to that is yes, because Joseph would have told him to be a carpenter. Uh, 
onto his brother, you know, brothers James and Joseph, Judas and Simon, and sisters. So, good old Mary, she had at least seven kids. <laughs> She's tough. <laughs> <laughs> and they take offense. So the first thing that they say is, this is amazing. And then very quickly, because they, they watched him grow up, that turns to offense. So there's a couple of things in there for all of us. One, everyone has a ministry. Like those Melanesian brothers, like the 72 that Jesus called, like those of us who say to the church, I think maybe possibly if, you know, maybe I should be looking at becoming maybe, uh, I think, possibly a priest. And they go, you don't seem certain about that. <laughs> But here's the thing, we've all got a call, every one of us has a call to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, every one of us. <coughs> and sometimes that'll go down really well. Sometimes that'll go down really well and people will go, that's amazing. But part of the difficulty is sometimes people will be less receptive to that. Partially because they know our history. You know, the long hair, the ponytail, the earring. Tried a, tried a moustache for a while. Not good. And so the challenge is how do we proclaim the good news without letting our own history get in the way of that? And I think Paul has the answer. So Paul is talking about, in today's reading, this experience. And, and most scholars are fairly sure that when he, when he talks about this mystical experience of a man who's been taken up into the heavens, he's actually talking about himself. But he's not boasting, he's not saying, this is me, look at me, I'm amazing. In fact, he says, I'm not that impressive. You know, I've got and we don't know what the thorn in his flesh was, but I've got these issues. I, I know I'm not that impressive. But here's the thing that I do have, is I have this picture of God, and that's important. That's amazing. And so Paul uses his own weaknesses, his own flaws, his own uh, idiosyncrasies, as a tool to point people to God. So it's not actually about him. But rather it's about letting God transform his weaknesses or use his weaknesses for good. So when we have our weaknesses, I know there's a temptation to cover them up. When we have our cracks in our lives, I know there's a temptation to uh, put you know, the equivalent of spackle over the top of them. But if we can have courage, we might be able to use those weaknesses to point others to the good news. Because that, at the end of the day, whether you call to be a Melanesian <coughs> brother in, in, the, in Vanuatu, or ordained ministry, or, or, or a person who's still exploring their vocation, because we all have one, that is the core of it. To share with others our journey with God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.